Hello, I'm Susan Nash, and it's my great pleasure to introduce Lorena Moscardelli. She's with Equinor, and she's going to speak with us today about deep water mixed siliciclastic carbonate systems. Welcome, Lorena. Thank you, Susan, for the invitation. Okay. Yes, so I, I thought that, uh, you know, I would take uh, advantage of the opportunity uh, today, Susan, to talk a little bit about piece of work that we that we did uh, a few years back in the uh, research and technology group in, in Austin uh, in collaboration with our exploration colleagues in, in Calgary, in the Calgary office. And uh, it has to do with this uh, idea of uh, deep water mix uh, siliciclastic carbonate systems. And um, uh, I, I like to start to talk about this topic uh, um, showing this, uh, these cartoons. Um, the one on the left uh, shows a mixed siliciclastic carbonate system uh, in, in, in a shellfall or proximal uh, setting in which, uh, you know, it's illustrated very nicely the input of siliciclastics uh, from inland, uh, then uh, carbonate uh, build up, and, and then this concept of uh, interaction between these two systems and, and this mixed uh, environment. Uh, now, th this model has uh, some limitations in the sense that uh, the, the understanding of the system is limited to the inboard area. So, so we, we are left, uh, you know, wondering what happens in the outboard uh, region. And, and this is, is valid and, uh, in, in many systems where we have studied uh, mixed uh, siliciclastic carbonate systems because they're quite constrained uh, and, and this is actually what happens, you know. Um, in, the, in the other... The, stream, we have uh, this calciclastic submarine fans uh, that, and this model was developed by, by Pyros and Pujante in, the, in, the two, in 2008. And in here, what we have is a carbonate buildup or, or car carbonate factory in the outbo outboard area or outer shelf. And then we have the development of these uh, canyons or, or channels that are fed by these uh, carbonates uh, and that uh, in, in some areas look like uh, uh, siliciclastic systems, you know, with channels and fans and, and so on. So there are different types of architectures that are documented in here. But uh, the, the limitation with this other model is that the, the source area is limit, limited to the carbonate factory. It doesn't consider, uh, you know, potential connections uh, between the inboard systems that could be siliciclastic and, and, and these carbonate uh, platforms outboard. So, so there is a gap in there. Uh, so the question, you know, is what happens in the, in the outboard region of a continental margin when mixed siliciclastic carbonate systems are, are active inboard? And we, we identify this as, as, a, as a knowledge gap um, and, and, you know, there are several reasons for that. Uh, one of them is, is the traditional divisions between carbonate and siliciclastic subdisciplines. Uh, so so uh, that's an interesting topic that uh, can be addressed. Um, then the assumption that carbonate factories uh, instantly switch on and off uh, without considering potential transitional phases or the uh, coexistence. Uh, at least for a period of time between be, between the two. And then there are also limitations in terms of data coverage and, and data types. So um, we got to this conclusion after really trying very hard to, uh, to look for uh, examples in the, in the literature. And uh, they're, they're very limited. And, and uh, you know, in here, I'm, I'm just showing uh, these four examples, documented examples, that were the ones that we were able to, to, to find. Maybe there are a few more, but the point here is that they're not easy uh, to, to find on the, on the literature. And, and this figure here maybe can help me, um, you know, illustrate uh, the concept. Uh, it's, a, it's a figure from the work uh, of Francis et al. in, in uh, the Gulf of Papua uh, and North Queensland. 
it's a modern environment and, and essentially in this case what happens is that you have input of siliciclastics coming from, from the drainage area uh, inboard and then uh, currents uh, are able to uh, mobilize some of those siliciclastics and, and pass through uh, the, the reefs or the, of, or, or the carbonates but that defines some sort of interaction between the two systems. Um, so, you know, we were interested on this also because uh, at the time we were looking at the Nova Scotia margin and uh, I, I would also like to, uh, you know, take advantage of the opportunity here to do a little bit of advertisement uh, of our uh, most recent AAPG uh, paper that was uh, published in, in October of last year uh, and with some of uh, my colleagues here, Jesus Ochoa, Ian Lont and, and Laura Sam. And uh, essentially what we did was um, we look at the Nova Scotia uh, area and, and we uh, really try to approach the problem from a regional to semi-regional uh, kind of uh, view. And what I'm showing you in here is the, uh, the data that we use. We had 2D and 3D seismic data in, in this area where well, the, the 3D volumes were um, in, in a stamp, so the smaller areas of the basin, but the, we also had uh, some 2D coverage. We have some, some wells. Uh, one limitation in this basin is that most of the wells are in the shelf area. There are not that many uh, control points uh, outboard. Uh, we also have a lot of, uh, of salt uh, in here. And uh, this is uh, just a line drawing uh, in, in this area right here where you see the dotted uh, line uh, that shows a little bit um, the configuration of, uh, of, of, of the area. The, the interval of interest uh, has been highlighted here uh, in, in, in orange, uh, we're talking about that uh, lower Cretaceous interval, and I would say is this, uh, you know, upper Jurassic to lower Cretaceous transition uh, that we're more uh, interested on. Um, as I mentioned, we have some salt uh, in the area. And uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you in, in the next slide, I'm going to show you a, a cross section through this area. Mo most of the the interest that we had was in here, but this is also a good example of how, you know, uh, looking at uh, margin from a regional perspective can really help you unravel uh, some key aspects. And, and the reason why this area is so important is because the, the only core uh, in, the, in the outboard region is located, is located here, right? So I'm going to show you uh, this uh, line in there and, and, and here you can see the architecture of, 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 of the margin again uh, in orange here the, the interval of interest with some continental scale uh, clinoforms in there the paleo shelf break uh, in here and uh, this uh, is a correlation between two two wells uh, this well here tant the tantalum well um, is, is quite important because it is the one that has core it's located on the on the slope area in there and uh, what we start to see uh, on the on the core, uh, and this has been published also uh, by by Piper uh, in in an APG paper, by the way, is that um, you know we have gravity driving um, uh, deposits in here, uh, in the, in this case some some turbidites and also some uh, mass transport uh, deposits, right? So th this was an indication of of sediments bypassing uh, towards towards the slope. Uh, and then when we look at the, at the 3D seismic data and we start to look in, in more detail, you, you can see these gold wing uh, features and, and when you map them in, in 3D, you start to see these channelized features on the, on the slope area. So, so this is a, a, a picture of what's happening in this area uh, on, on, on the slope. So, so this uh, was useful uh, in, in this case because it was reassuring us that, that there was a sediment bypass uh, affecting the margin, that we, that we have these gravity driven, you know, uh, systems operating uh, in this margin at this time. So, so that slide that I show you uh, was here, right? So, so and, and then those uh, channel systems we're here in the slope, and in red, I, I should mention this, this is more or less the location of the paleo shelf break, um, you know, during the lower, uh, lower Cretaceous uh, 
or early Cretaceous, I should say. So, so then uh, what we did was we, we tried to uh, extrapolate some of these observations towards the south, yeah? And, and here, uh, what I'm showing you uh, covering this red uh, area is an isopac map uh, in, in time uh, of that lower, lower Cretaceous interval where I'm essentially showing, you know, the paleochill break in here. And then in, in bluish, uh, we, we see uh, these areas where we can see um, sedimentary pathways connecting the outer shelf uh, with, the, with the upper slope and, and, and getting into the salt, uh, salt domain. We also see some, some uh, mini basins and so on. So, so now we are, we're having a consistent uh, picture here that during this time we, we have uh, active sediment bypass uh, on, on, on this margin. If, if I look at the cross section in here, this is what I'm gonna be looking at. Uh, it looks a little bit different than um, in, the, in the north. Um, and uh, if, if we actually zoom in into the shelf, we start to see these clinoforms uh, that are actually uh, transporting sediments or pushing sediments through the shelf towards uh, the, the, the shelf break. And, and this is what we think is connecting uh, to this um, sedimentary pathways uh, and feeding these mini basins and, and so on. But let's see if we can see something else. Uh, we have some, some, some wells as well in this part of the, of the margin. And uh, in here is where the story starts to get uh, interesting within the context of mixed systems. Um, so what we see is that we have a series of uh, ulitic uh, shoals along the margin. And uh, we also have this intermingling of um, let's say carbonates uh, and, and siliciclastics. Uh, in some parts of the margin, what we, what we have when we look at the biostratigraphy and we, and we check the logs and, and, and the well information is that we have time missing and we have uh, good evidence of uh, erosion. Okay, so uh, in, in this uh, cross section with, this, with these wells, this well here, Albatros B13, we think is representing, you know, one of those bypass zones or uh, one of those areas that connected with the outer shelf and that uh, were acting as some sort of a, a bypass uh, conduit. Um, this is also zooming in, uh, and again, let's uh, talk a little bit or notice the importance of using different scales of observations and different types of data. And uh, just uh, an example of some of the thin sections and how they look like um, within these packages. Uh, we, we have things that are, that are uh, lagoonal, associated with lagoonal deposition, some other things that look like more pro-delta. Um, so, so all these uh, data uh, sets uh, allow us to put together the, the, the puzzle. So on the next slide then, I'm going to show you a, a seismic line that is distal. Uh, remember in, in this map, uh, the pollute shelf break is more or less here, yeah? And this is the, the, the cross section with the wells. I also show you, uh, you know, some isopac maps and some, and, and, and some observations that confirm or help help us uh, conclude that we have this uh, bypass on the upper slope. But now I'm gonna try to go a little bit more distal and, and, and show you how uh, the seismic, uh, the 2D seismic looks like in these more distal parts of the system. So this is one of those lines. And what I'm doing here, this is the interval that we're uh, interested on. And uh, what we're doing here is flattening in one of the key horizons. Uh, in this case, uh, we think this, uh, this would be equivalent to the, to the upper uh, Jurassic or the, the top of the upper Jurassic. And what you see is, uh, you, you see a series of down laps against this, this uh, surface and a lot of indications um, that perhaps you could have uh, lobes in here. So what we think is that these systems uh, are somehow connected, uh, you know, to these uh, lobes in, in distal parts of the um, of the system. So now just going uh, to, to, to the end uh, here, um, what we try to do was to conceptualize um, 
you know, what, what would happen if we had this mix siliciclastic carbonate systems operating on the, on, the, on the shelf and actually managing to bypass some of those uh, siliciclastics into uh, the deep water component of, of the system. So if we uh, do this exercise, again, conceptually, let's imagine that we are here in the fluvial part uh, of, of, of these deltas that manage to get into the outer shelf. And, and you will have, you know, these, these incisions with some, with some channels and so on. As you progress and you go a little bit more uh, distal, you, you will have, you know, the deltaic portion of the system. As you go further and, 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 and are close to the shelf break, but still in the inboard part, you will have these oolitic shoals. Um, and then you will have these areas of, these areas of bypass. Uh, that would be equivalent to this point in here. And then a little bit up, um, you know, in the, in the slope, then uh, you, you could have some uh, carbonate breaches associated with the collapse of, of some of these uh, oolitic uh, shoals in, in near the shelf break. Uh, but in some other areas where you connect uh, to the uh, sedimentary pathways or, or the erosion, uh, then you can start to have a slope erosion and you have these pathways you know, uh, starting to bypass sediments on the upper part of, of, of the slope. In other areas, perhaps you would have, uh, you know, channels and so on, maybe feeding um, these uh, mini basins, because then in here we also have salt, right, which I didn't uh, illustrate on this cartoon. But, but then you will have some uh, mini basins and you can have ponded torbidites and, and so on. And then still, if, if you keep going this route, uh, you are in more distal, distal part of the systems. So you have these Levy channel complexes. At some point, uh, you start to get into the channel low transition zone. And finally, as you go to the distal part, you will have these lobes that we saw on the, on the, seismic, uh, on the seismic line. So conceptually, this is more or less how this uh, would work. And then if we look at this in, in cross section, it also speaks of the importance of knowing where you are a long strike, right? Not all profiles are going to look the same. Uh, if, if we're in a position like this, for instance, we, we might have these um, delta systems uh, interacting with the oolitic shoals and having these lagoons with mixed systems and so on in the outboard part of the system, you can have breaches. Uh, but if you move uh, a little bit to the south, let's say, you uh, get into these areas of uh, sediment bypass or conduits that are connecting, you know, your um, deltaic systems with the upper slope. You have a lot of erosion here and bypass, and eventually you will have uh, some uh, accumulation of, of, of sandstones with a lot of mixture with, you know, also a carbonate component. Um, and, and in this case, I'm, I'm, we're just trying to, you know, illustrate here a little bit of the um, influence of, of, of salt and, and, and mini basins and so on. So I think, uh, you know, I'm going to um, leave it there. And I hope, uh, you know, this makes people curious about uh, this, these concepts about mixed systems in, in, in deep water. And um, I, I guess the last comment that I would make is that uh, I think there is a still a lot that needs to be understood uh, in, in, this kind of, uh, in this kind of context. Oh, absolutely. And I, I was just thinking about even the implications for, say, the, um, the energy within the systems and the sorting and, and just um, especially dealing with, with a, a sorting and, and variable porosity, but then also maybe connectivity, just so many different issues. Yeah, I mean, there, there are many uh, question marks on how, on, on how this could uh, affect, uh, you know, uh, rock properties on the, on the final deposits, uh, from, from sorting to also uh, components linked with diagenesis, right? If you have uh, Absolutely. a higher percentage of, of, of the carbonate uh, portion on, on this, uh, how much of that can be dissolved and, you know, what, what happens right. with that. Or cement. <laughs> yeah, but uh, well, that's uh, yeah, that's the the, the work of uh, of the team, and I, I hope uh, you found it uh, interesting and oh, informative. Oh, it's wonderful. 
Yeah. Absolutely. And thank you very much for sharing it because I know this will be of great interest to, to anybody who's doing work in this or who would just like to know more about turbidites and, and complex systems. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Oops. 